Not a day goes by in cryptocurrency where there is not a boom or a bust or a massive crash of some description. That is because the market is highly volatile because it is a new market. That's what happens with new industries. So in today's video, we're going to look at the crypto crash, of course. We're going to look at why and I'm going to look at what to do next, how you can protect your positions and make better fortunes in the future from cryptocurrency. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button as soon as you jump onto the videos. Subscribe to the channel if you are new here and finding some value from the content. You can always unsubscribe later, click dislike and a hate comment. Go for gold. It's all for free and it's for you to enjoy down below in the comments section. All right, so the Bitcoin crash and why. We looked at this in yesterday's live stream and there is a lot of noise out there. And that's what I like to do on the channel is cut out the noise. So if you guys haven't, make sure you subscribe to the free newsletter. There, are link, there is a link to this down below. The first thing in the description, I have a special coming out on the Investor Accelerator, the premium uh, course and membership that will be coming out in the next 24 hours. So make sure you hit the free new investor newsletter that comes out. You guys get fantastic information from that. We're going to look at the tweets that I've got from today. I'm going to look at the charts as well of Bitcoin, ETH, Cardano, Solana, and one of the trades that I was putting up on Twitter, which has held up very well in this crypto crash. Let's have a look at our portfolio on SwiftX, 15,900 USD. So it's still up about 60% from when we entered this position. And if you guys are trading in Australia, there is the link to SwiftX down below, $10 of free Bitcoin when you sign up. Referencing yesterday's video, will China collapse Bitcoin this month? So we saw Evergrande news come out that went absolutely bonkers. Everyone was talking about a full meltdown in the financial markets and you can bet your bottom dollar those prepper guys who are talking about a cycle meltdown or a market meltdown are loving this right now. They think this is going to be the end of the world and that what they've been preparing for is coming. I will let them know it's probably not the case at the moment, but this is one of the reasons for the cryptocurrency meltdown. If you're not following traditional markets, please do so. Have a couple of your charts up and understand what's going on out there as well. You have uh, the S&P 500 has dropped off a mere 1.7%. All right, so this is big in the traditional markets. But once you scroll out, scroll back, have a look at where we've come from. It's not that big of a deal, even though the world is looking like it needs to be such a big deal. The The big deal, which was in the news yesterday, is Evergrande, and that's going to continue on as well. This is the second largest property development company in China. So... What everyone believes is if China goes down, the rest of the world goes down because it's such a big powerhouse at the moment. And I'm not going to dispute that if China goes down, you know, things aren't going to get messy. But for this particular company and the fear that has been put out into the markets is there to be taking the cheapest cryptocurrencies that the whales can find. Evergrande, if you have already picked up, and we talked about this in the live stream yesterday, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel. This company has been down for four years. I, you, you'll notice that even smart people may not look at charts. They might not understand what's going on here. And I'm not having a go at anyone, but honestly, guys, you guys are following this, so I, I assume that you're probably getting the idea of what's happening in these markets. This company has been in trouble for four years. It's been down since October 2017, Evergrande. This made the headlines. People have been fearful from it within the stock markets, which obviously leads over into the cryptocurrency markets because cryptocurrency is a small part of the overall financial markets. And this is just what happens. It's a flow on effect. Evergrande also went on a major tear down from about April of this year, April 2021. You can see the support levels during the 2020s or 2020 were broken in April and the market picked up, accelerated in downwards pressure. So this... This isn't new. This is definitely not new. But because of the news coming out that they may not be able to pay back their retail investors, it's made bigger headlines. But you can see the massive volume coming in here. And it is possible that China will bail this out. And then that just gets lumped onto the taxpayers. So this is one of those major reasons. Evergrande potentially collapsing. That's what you'll see in the news. The other major reason, 
looking at the S&P, which of course is probably feeling some fear from Evergrande. S&P, the major US markets, down. And that of course leads over into cryptocurrency as well because people want to take risk off the table if they believe the market should crash. Regardless of what we think about Bitcoin long term, no, you're wrong. It's It's got to be the next biggest thing. It's It's here to save us. Sure, it might happen in time. I think it will. That's why I'm betting on Bitcoin. But that doesn't mean that people aren't de-risking themselves in times where uh, the market gets a little uncertain. We've been following this very closely in the Investor Accelerator. So like I said earlier, make sure you jump onto the free newsletter and check out the special that is coming out in the next 24 hours because this is what we do on a weekly basis is cover the markets and crypto to understand where our positions sit. All right, moving on to Twitter. Now, this is the next big piece of hopium. These are the times that I get really excited because the prices are cheaper. I don't want to be buying things when they are marked up so much. Plan B, looking at the the um, stock to flow model, we are right on track according to plan B. In June, I sketched the rough path of how Bitcoin could go towards its stock to flow target of 100 grand in December, just confirming we are still on path in his opinion. So the data, oh, the, the numbers that he's thrown up here, August 47k, pretty close, September 43, we've seen that now, we've hit around 40k, October looks like a good month, November we go crazy, December we go crazy as well, according to plan B. Will it happen? Maybe, but these are all sort of things that I look at leading towards a good time to be buying and then good times to be selling. We don't know for sure what the market will do, but we have a pretty reasonable idea of what other people are fearing or whether they're getting uh, greedy as well. So basically, when people are fearful, they think the market is turning and will never see higher prices again. And then when everyone gets greedy, you're never going to be right. The market's always going to go up. It's just the way the markets work, especially in cryptocurrency because it is so young and there are so many new investors here which have not gone through the war trenches of understanding markets don't do what they think it will do. So on that, I've got a couple of tweets here which I was looking at in terms of buying the dip or not catching a falling knife. And I think it's an important one here to just learn the process as we go through the market to, I guess, not get caught out and lose a lot of money in all of the dips. So this tweet here uh, was from a Mike Novogratz tweet. And Novogratz is talking about at what level will you buy the sole dip? And I said, when I see a confirmation of the trend changing, otherwise you're catching falling knives. And other people saying, well, you know, you look in the rear view mirror, you're always going to be late, potentially. But I just felt like it was a falling knife. And so I posted this this morning. Here's a lesson. Don't listen to anyone, not even me. Go out and do your own research. Get your own plans together. You will feel so much better in the market when you have your own plan as well. So trust your own game plan. Otherwise, you'll end up like these folks that are following um, Novogratz, buying the sole dip every single day that it was down and then basically catching a falling knife. They, they, you start to bleed out really hard. So if look at look at sole here. We had day down after day down, day down, day down, day down, reversal and then more days down. Then we got a relief rally and then more days down. So yes, that was yesterday's price action. We just saw that dump. We saw high volume. This is a potential sign of a correction or a trend reversal, but we have to see what happens over the next few days. That's what the market does. Now, sure, this could bounce up and you say, well, you might as well bought it at that 155, 160 level anyway. That's This is how the markets work. You just have to be prepared and have your own plan. So the way I look at it is I still don't see a solid reversal yet, but days where the market drops really heavily on big volume, takes out some lows, and then we see a reversal, but it's not confirmed yet. We still got 22 hours to go. Then you see a reversal, you say, well, maybe that was the last of the selling and the smart money is buying. That's the idea that I'm looking at here. And the little subtlety here, I'll give you a little tip. It's look at where the lows come in. We've got a low here of $125 and this was the other fearful day. This day was massive back on the 7th of September. It was only two weeks ago, but this was a, a big day. Remember back to that huge volume, big push down, $124. So if this 125 holds up, this could be the start of a reasonable, maybe an intermediate low. That's for Solana at this point. So going back to what we were looking at in the crash, Bitcoin's crashed, cryptos are crashed again. Here's why, what to do next. This is what I'm looking at to do next is look for these reversal patterns or 
look at periods where the market has absolutely dumped, but still held at some sort of support levels. All right. And that goes to the next tweet. And I've popped this up today and it may have been a little confusing for some new people. So I appreciate these comments that come through on Twitter. Make sure you are following on Twitter. It's so much easier to get across and and put up some new messages over there. So the question was, can I elaborate? So I'm talking about buying major dips, but then I'm saying don't buy all the dips. And then the other piece is, well, I'm waiting for confirmations and I'm buying breakouts as well. So the question came from a follower. Can you elaborate? Because it would seem you would want to wait for the bottoms Plus, you just tweeted that buying as it's falling is like catching falling knives. So, which do you do? You wait for this to bottom or do you and go and play the fool's game? And I say, well, in my plan, I've got two different purchasing options. So, my plan shows buy major dips and then I have these defined. And then two is buy, the, buy once the low is confirmed with the trend reversing. So, this often includes breakout entries as well. So that's why most of the time I'm always looking at, you know, hopium free content because during these periods of hopium for me, it's only about five, maybe 10% of the market time. So the 365 days of the year, if I look at 5%, I'm doing most of my buying on around five to 10% of those days. That's about 18 to 36 days of the entire year. I'm not interested in buying all of these dips on the way down. That used up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe skip this day, nine, ten, maybe buy here as well. That's eleven days. So <clears throat> if everyone was buying all the dips, you run out of money. You just don't have the funds to do it. But unfortunately there on social media, on YouTube, there there isn't that much knowledge of when to buy good dips. And people just say, well buy now the market fell a few percent. You know, this day here we fell four percent. Buy the dip. We fell another two percent buy the dip. We fell another 3% buy the dip. This isn't how I work and I don't believe the smart money works like that either because otherwise they would not be smart money for, for very long. So that's my strategy there. I have major dips. Dips. Yes, I define these and I buy once the low is confirmed with a trend reversal. And again, yes, I do talk about these in the Investor Accelerator, the premium course because this is a full course to understand uh, swings entries and exits. So if you want to learn more about that, check out the Investor Accelerator. Link to this is down below. Subscribe to the free newsletter. Comes out once every two weeks. That's all. And then when the special goes live uh, over the next 24 hours, if you want, you can check it out. Check out the TIA Premium and uh, get yourself that special as well. While we are here, let's look at Bitcoin and ETH and ADA. Give us an update there. Bitcoin has dropped into the zone that we were looking at around that 37 to about 44k. Sure, this was a big day down, big volume. I like those as buy the dip opportunities and I don't buy all the dips, but that dip looks tasty. So I'm going to buy a little bit of that dip. Then we got yesterday, uh, a big day down on some volume, another tasty looking dip. And then today we've just seen the market push down to around 40k and hit our 50% level. This range was looking very similar. It's like, oh, the, the Wyckoff distribution pattern at the top of the last uh, cycle top for Bitcoin, we just see a very, very similar repeat, which is what we looked at in previous videos as well. You've got that nice big push up and then a correction, another push up and a correction. And then the market gets slower and slower. And then we just roll over, correct. We try to uh, rally to recover. We miss out and then we crash again. It's almost an identical repeat of what happened through December to approximately May or June. Big move up, correction, another big move up, correction. And the market starts to roll over. It takes out the lows. That's the big key there. That's the difference in dips. Check out this dip. Did not take out that dip. All right. Tries to rally and recover. Didn't happen. Everyone calling for $80,000 Bitcoin. It's the bullish thing ever. What happened through this period where we got a fake out? We should be going to new all-time highs. This period, you missed the boat. All that sort of stuff. Now it looks like we're repeating a very similar pattern as well. Will it play out exactly like this? Probably not because the market doesn't repeat exactly the same. It just rhymes. So this Bitcoin dip looks pretty good. It's in my zone there. I'm st it's still holding up above a 50%. That is a good sign. 
This is not the same for all 10,000 cryptocurrencies. Let me make that very clear. This is not exactly the same for all of the cryptocurrencies. ETH looks a little stronger and others don't. ETH, on the other hand, in that in the zone, 24 to around that 3,400. Underneath these 50 percent, a little weaker, but it's still holding up on its uh, correction or its rally 50 percent. You can see that there. There's the 50 at around 2,800. So a good sign. ETH, another one that I like and that I'm buying. Look at the volume. Nice volume days. That's what I want to see. And the market not trend too much lower either. So ETH is looking good. ADA, it knocked on the door of $2 and hit that a few times and then took, oh, sorry, that was 230. Took that out, crashed down to two bucks. And now we've seen a little bit of a reversal here up to around 212 as I'm, I'm filming this. So the ADA did get under two bucks for a brief moment yesterday and today for a couple of maybe an hour or so. And now we're back above that 212. So we're getting that reversal point here. We'll continue to follow this as well. The good news is it's above its uh, rally. So it's wave here, the up, the up move, the uptrend above its 50% level of $2.04. ADA's looking good. And the other crypto which held up very, very well has been Atom. This has been a trade that I posted on Twitter uh, quite a, maybe a couple of weeks ago now. This is holding up reasonably well, especially on its Bitcoin value compared to other cryptocurrencies currencies which have seen moves to the downside, heavy moves to the downside. So at the moment, Atom is at around $35. We saw a big correction. It's holding up above this previous level before... Uh, the market took off and had this little fake out. We'll keep following this as well, especially on Twitter. So make sure you're over there on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. Sign up on the free newsletter. And if you're Aussie and you're looking to purchase some cryptocurrency with your superannuation, check out New Brighton Capital. Link to this is down below. Book in your free 20-minute consultation. Uh, use Pazino as the referral code here if you want to get $150 of free credit once you have completed your SMSF application. So this is to purchase cryptocurrency in your retirement funds. And what better time than when the market is down to be buying some cryptocurrencies for the long term. Make sure you do your own research, your own due diligence. You don't want to be throwing money at a lot of dead projects out there, especially on the dumps. All right, guys, thanks very much for your attention and your time today. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We are crushing it at the moment. We are going towards 220,000 at breakneck speeds. I uh, appreciate all of your support and your comments as well. It's been fantastic. We'll continue this through the next stage of the cryptocurrency bull market. Been here every single day, pretty much of 2021. I'll see you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.